today I'm going to show you how to use one of my favorite color grading plugins, Film Convert Nitrate, to get your footage looking like that. Using this lens it's zoomed in today so you cannot see the mess that's behind me. But hope you enjoy this video. My name's Stephen. I'm a full-time commercial filmmaker and I also make videos on YouTube about the outdoors, running, exploring, and technology. And it's a bit of a weird mishmash. And today I'm gonna to be looking at uh, color grading in Premiere Pro using Film Convert Nitrate. A um, couple of weeks ago, maybe a week ago, I released a video which was a review about um, a wood powered camping stove and I got a lot of comments on the color grade from people and um, I'm actually really pleased with how it came out, it worked so so well and I thought I would show you how I achieved that particular color grade uh, using Film Convert Nitrate and Premiere Pro. If you don't know, Film Convert Nitrate is a plugin that lets you emulate uh, film stocks, it just gives you a really nice filmic look um, on your footage, uh, but don't consider it just something you can chuck on there and you'll get great results. You need to know how to adjust it, manipulate it, uh, and how to just how to get the most out of it if you actually want to color grade. If you think color grading is just dropping on a lot or a look, you're not color grading. There's more to it than that. So I will show you how I color grade it this shot. This was shot on a Panasonic GH5 using the City Like D color mode in 10 bit 4K at 25 frames per second. This is my workspace, set up in Premiere Pro. You can see at the top I'm on the color tab, which brings up the Lumetri color panel on the right, which we'll use later on in this video. And you can see in the middle I've got my central shot. So I got the effects here, and I type, I'll just type in nitrate. There it is and drop it on top of my clip. Then I go to my effects, controls, and I'll just ignore that, close that, and so they don't distract. Okay, so here we've got Film Convert Nitrate, and the really clever thing about how this works is that you pick the camera and the color profile that you use, and it matches up the, the values accordingly. So I click on, I'm just gonna widen this a little bit so we can see it better. Choose your camera, going for Panasonic uh, GH5. And as I said, the Cine Like D, hit apply, boom. I've already got a bit of a film look there. Um, now the next thing I can do is I can change my film stock. Now I do, I do actually use the default film stock in this, but I will show you what it looks like uh, cycling through a couple of the options. Here we have film stock here. And these are basically emulations of literally real historical film stocks that exist or existed. You can go down, you can pick a different one and that will change your overall look. So what I tend to do is I tend to, I'll, I'll like scan down these and, and find one that is closest to the look I'm going for. There's several color ones, there's also black and white ones in here. But I'm just gonna stick with the default one for now and I'll show you how to modify it. Um, you've got two settings below that. You've got Film Chroma and Film Luma. Chroma is the is sort of the shifts how the colors look in it. And then Luma is more to do with your, your brightness values. So play around with those until you, you get them how you, uh, you look them. You look them? You like them. Uh, film size then. This is, a, this is a great tool. So film size is really cool because it lets you uh, simulate the, the, the level of detail, the, the blur and the thickness of the grain of those film stocks. So I have it in 35 millimeter full frame at the minute. That's the look I wanna go, that gives you the sharpest look. Uh, but I can change that all the way down to here's Super 16. You can notice it's a lot grainier, a lot more vintage looking. If you want to get that vintage look, this is a really good way of doing it. Um, and I can go right down to eight millimeter, which point there's a lot of detail is gone. 35 millimeter full frame, that's what I'm going for, right. Then we're down into the sentence for the grain. Now this is the, the physical noise that's that's on screen. I, I tend to leave this at default, but if you want, you can bump the size up and make your footage look really grainy. Uh, you can soften it, you can increase how obvious it is. Um, why would you wanna do that? Well, 
it would help to simulate using like higher sensitivity of uh, footage stock or maybe how it would look if you shot it in low light and then it had been pushed in the exposure. This is all very technical but it lets you play around with how the grain looks. We can then go down into color correction where you have your three color wheels where you can manipulate the colors in the shadows, highlights and midtones. I don't need to do any of that here but I'll show you what that does. So I can pull shadows down into the blue and I can pull highlights up into the orange and I'll get this horrible <laughs> look. Uh, sometimes that is useful. What I am going to do for now in this is I'm going to scroll on down to saturation because I want this. I want to bring out those greens. This is this is Northern Ireland. I want to show how punchy and green everything is this time of year. And I'm going to bring that right the way up to 162. Yeah, that's that's a lot more green. <laughs> That's how, it, that's how it looks to me. That's the look I want to go for, that really punchy green. Uh, below that, I've then got the curves, which allows you to really finely, organically manipulate the, the, the contrast within the scene. I usually add a little point in the middle and a point midway between those two points and then drag that bottom one down a bit just to add a little bit more contrast. I don't want to add too much here because it's already quite a contrasty shot. I might fine tune that again later. And at that point, that could be me done, but uh, I, I want to push this even further. I want to push the greens in this uh, even further, even punchier, even more Irish. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to go over here to Lemetri, which will appear on the right-hand side if you're in the color profile. I want to add a little bit more dynamic range into it, so actually I'm going to go back up to basic correction and pull my shadows up slightly first. Do it there. Yeah, let's do that. I might add more contrast back in later, but back down to the curves. The first thing I want to do is I want to shift. Um, I want to shift the greens in this video to be more of an emerald green. So I'm going to add a, 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 a green always has yellow in it. So you wouldn't just put a dot right in the middle of the greens and try to manipulate it. It wouldn't work. So I go to the right hand side of the greens where it's starting to go into blue because that tends to be still the color that plants will be. And then I go right all the way to where the yellow is starting to become orange and add another dot, add a dot in the middle, and then pull that up. I know this is actually gonna go down, but I can show you, I can, if I pull that up, you can see it makes it more yellowy. You might like that look, I, it's not what I want for this. And if I pull it down, you can see it adds more blue into the green, which gives it more of an emerald feel. There it is. Before, after, before, after. I'll expand the range in that a little bit by pulling that one to the left. I could go crazy on it, like, it looks really unnatural. Now <laughs> it's nearly blue. Um, but I'll go back up just until I've. I'm pushing it into sort of hyper real territory here. Now, I want to boost the saturation on this again and. Uh, darken it slightly. So I'm going to go up here and add these dots on the saturation curve. Pull up the saturation for those same values. You can see this is looking crazy now. Um, so I've got it saturated, but it's maybe a little bit fluorescent. So I'm going to go down to hue versus limit, which is essentially brightness. Um, same range and pull that down a bit just to take that fluorescent edge off it. Um, and then the last thing I will do, because this was shot in like a, like a ditch uh, with a dead stump in the middle and I wanted to give it like a tunnel feel. So I go down to my vignette effect, I'll add a little bit of vignetting the size, maybe about, let's see, minus one looks quite good, and I'll pull in the midpoint, before, after, and that is my look. So here it is before. And here it is after. And there you go. There you go. And that is how I color graded that shot using Film Convert Nitrate and Lumetri Color. I've said this before, but the essence of, for me for color grading is to try and bring motion back into an image. It's to get it to make you feel how you felt when you viewed it. That's always how I approach color grading. I do tend to go for more saturated, uh, bright, colors for that reason because normally I'm doing outdoor stuff and I'm really wanting uh, just the vibrancy of, of the outdoors, especially those greens uh, to shine there. 
you might pick something completely different if it was like a really grim situation, but the, those basic techniques that I use there, you can take those and you can apply them to any project, just maybe shift some of the values in the other direction. But that, that for me is the essence of color grading. Really hope you enjoyed that. If you did enjoy it, please feel free to subscribe or have a look around the channel. There's other videos on color grading and photo editing on there as well. And you might find other things you're interested in, but other than that, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.